next Lord's Day morning. And then here, back here at 4 p.m., uh, the drive-in continues uh, with our brother, Mr. David Boyd. David will be along to preach the gospel. I'm off on a wee break next week, and I'm not only giving myself a break, but I feel I'll be giving you a wee break too from listening to me. But anyway, we do look to the Lord. And we make all these announcements subject. Do remember Sunday school. Our Sunday school next Lord's Day morning at 10 a.m. is on Zoom. So please do remember that. And Kilkeel Baptist Tabernacle Youth, you're meeting on Zoom at 8 p.m. That's next Lord's Day. All right, we're in, uh, we are tonight turning to Genesis chapter 19 and commencing to read from verse number 14. I trust tonight that you'll follow the scripture reading with us. Genesis chapter 19, beginning at verse 14. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But it seemed, he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, Take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, O, oh, not so, my Lord. Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. It is not a little one, and my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be come hither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. And the sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord reigned upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. And then I want you to turn with me for a wee brief reading over in Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, and commencing to read at verse 28. The Lord Jesus is speaking, and he says, Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, so did they eat and drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that which is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. And we end there this evening, and we know that the Lord will add his blessing upon the reading of his own precious truth. It scares me to death tonight. It scares me to death tonight. It scares me to think 
as I read through the Scriptures, how many people were so close, so close in getting saved, but never got saved. I think tonight of the rich young ruler, a young man who came running to the Lord Jesus, a young man who got on his knees before the Lord Jesus, and a young man who pleaded with the Lord Jesus and said to the Lord Jesus, Good Master, what must I do that I may inherit eternal life? And that's a young man who wanted to go to heaven. Just like everybody here, you want to go to heaven. But when the Lord Jesus explained to him what he had to do in order for him to go to heaven, we read that the rich young ruler left sad. He left the Lord Jesus the same way he came to him. He went away sad. Why? Because he didn't want to do what the Lord Jesus wanted him to do. And that young man, who was so close, was lost. I think of others tonight. I think of King Agrippa, the man who said to the Apostle Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to become a Christian, almost. But he never became a Christian. The Bible's full of people tonight who were almost saved. But yet, they were so far. Tonight as we come to the Scripture reading, we're going to look and another person tonight who was so close, so close, but yet so far. There's only two people that the Lord Jesus ever told us to remember. The first people he told to remember was his own people, and the Lord Jesus said, Remember me. And that's first and foremost that the Lord Jesus tells people to remember his own people. We're to remember him. That's why the Lord's Supper was instituted for the Lord's people so that we would remember him, his death in his own appointed way. But the other person that the Lord Jesus told us to remember is not for God's people to remember, but for the unsaved to remember. And that's remember Lot's wife. He never told us to remember the great Abraham or any of the great patriarchs. The only other person he told us to remember was to remember Lot's wife. Lot's wife tonight is a person who was so close, but yet so far. I want you to first of all to remember her place. Her place. She lived in the cities of the plain. She lived in the Sodom and Gomorrah. She lived in a place that was under the judgment of God. She lived in a place that was doomed for destruction. Verse 14 of our Bible reading, we, we're told, For the Lord will destroy the city. She lived in a place where people believed that they could live whatever way they liked. She lived in a place where people believed that they could get away with their sin. She lived in a place where a day of reckoning was coming. She lived in a place 
Well, the people's attitude was that they could live as they like. This is how the people lived in Sodom. This is how they lived in Gomorrah. They lived as they pleased. They lived as they like. In fact, they lived in such a way that they provoked the judgment of God upon them. They were a people where there was no fear of God before their eyes. When you read the previous chapter, in chapter number 18, verse 20, God says to Abraham, the cry of Sodom, or the sin of Sodom, or the wickedness of Sodom and Gomorrah is come up before me, and their sin is very great. God wants us to remember her place this evening. It was a place of sin. It was a place of abomination. It was a place of evil. It was a place of wickedness. And God saw everything. God knew everything. And God was coming in judgment. I have a message tonight from God for the leaders of our nation. And God has it laid on my heart to warn you who sit in Parliament. You push through these abominable laws. You're going to face the judgment of God. You're bringing upon yourselves the wrath of God. And all of these acts, such as abortion, that they're trying to push through, I've got news for you, who sit in the great powers tonight, you're bringing the judgment of God upon you. We we'll live in a world and they're crying tonight of inequality, equality, equality. What about the equality and the rights tonight of the unborn? And I want to tell our leaders that God is a God of judgment. And God will visit with his judgment upon you. And I challenge the Christian politicians to stand up and speak up on these days and forget about losing votes. God is more important than Ulster. And this message is a warning to us all. God will visit sin. God will visit, na visit a nation. God will visit this world in judgment. Remember her place. But let's remember her problem too. She had a problem. Do you know what Lot's wife's problem was? She had a saved husband who didn't live the life. That's what her problem was. She had a saved husband who did not live the life. And only we read in 2 Peter 2 and 8 that he had a righteous soul, you wouldn't have believed it. We read it in the story here in Genesis 19, how he goes to the sons-in-law and he tells the sons-in-law to get out, to get away, because judgment is coming. But Lot to them was like one mocking. I can see Lot going to them. 
Hey boys, hey boys, come on, quick, get out of here. God's coming in judgment. He's going to destroy the city. And you know what the four boys do? The two boys do? They laugh at him. They laugh at him. The two boys. It's two sons. They laugh at him. What are you telling us to get out of here for? Listen, lad, did you not bring us here? Did you not choose here? Have you not lived here? Have you not enjoyed here? And now you're coming all of a sudden and telling us we have to get out, we have to get saved and get away from the place. And they laughed at him. You see, Christian, this is what happens when we profess that we're saved and we don't live the life. People won't listen to us. And Lot is a warning for us all. Oh, yes, that was her problem. She had a saved husband who didn't live the life he seemed to make as one that mocked. That's a sad indictment tonight on anybody that's saved. When their life runs contrary to their profession, Maybe there's someone here tonight. And that's why you're not saved. Because some Christian has done some dirty deed on you. And you're saying to yourself, well, well, if the like of him or her's going to heaven, well, I don't need to be saved. Listen tonight, listen to me. Don't you let a hypocrite put you off tonight from getting saved. Friend, tonight stop looking about you. Stop looking around you. Start looking to Christ tonight. He's the sinless one. He's the one that went to the cross. He's the one that bore your sin in his own body and upon the tree. He's the one that paid the price. Remember her place. Remember her problem. Let's remember her privileges tonight. Oh, boys, if there ever was a woman who had a privilege, and many of them, it was her. Look at verse 16. Verse 16. And while he lingered, there's Lot lingering. Men, that's the angels. The lead hold upon his hand. Listen to this next bit. And the hand of his wife. And upon the hand of his two daughters. I want you to notice something here very lovingly. You know, God wasn't going to give this woman up too easily. He sent angels in, not only to speak to them, but to actually go and take them by the hand. My goodness me, tell me, what greater privilege could any man have or any woman have in heaven? A very angel sent to bring you out from underneath judgment. But I want you to notice, in verse 16 we read, The Lord being merciful unto him. Oh, my dear unsaved friend, how many times has the Lord been merciful to you? You've had privileges, just like Lot's wife, maybe not in a more dramatic way, but you had privileges like her. Brought up in a Christian home. You sat under Christian Sunday school teacher. You knew from a wee child that Christ died on the cross and that Christ is the only means of salvation. And still, still, you linger. You linger tonight. Yet you remain where you are. You've had privilege after privilege. Warning after warning. And yet, yet you're still in that place where you're abiding under the wrath of God right at this very moment. 
And that wrath could burst upon your head at any moment. But I want you to notice something else about this. This is wonderful. Oh, friend, this is wonderful. This is something I have never seen before. Verse 16, the Lord being merciful unto him. Verse 19, thou hast magnified thy mercy. The Lord just wasn't merciful. But the Lord magnified his mercy. Wonder how many times, dear unsafe friend, God has magnified his mercy to you. Maybe you were in a bed of sickness. Maybe you were at death's door at one time. And God not only was merciful to you, but he magnified his mercy. You know, this is how desperate God was in this incident here. This is how desperate God was to save this family, to save this woman, that he sent two angels to take them by the hand. You want to know tonight how desperate God is to save you? How desperate God was to save me? He didn't send two angels. He sent his only begotten son to die on an old rugged blood-stained cross at Calvary and there to pay the price for your sin and for mine. Not for my sin and your sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. And I'll tell you this, the fire that finally fell upon Sodom and Gomorrah was nothing compared to the fire that fell upon God's Son, the fire of God's wrath. Was saying that him, God loved the world of sinners lost. Ruined by the fall. Salvation full at highest cost. He offers free to all. You know, friend, tonight, we read here, we read here, where we read in verse 23, the sun was risen upon the earth. Ah, thank God, there's another sun that rose on that morning. After the third day, he rose again, God's son. Friend, Christ not only died, but he rose again. I preach Christ crucified, but I preach Christ risen. And I preach Christ as the only saviour of sinners. He's the only saviour tonight from judgment. Verse 17, we read here, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. In verse 22, we hear this, Haste thee, escape thither. Friend, tonight, that's the cry of God to every unsaved soul. Haste Thee, escape hither. The day of judgment is coming. Tell me this. How far has God to go to get you to heed the warning? To get you to see his love for you displayed on Calvary. How far has God to go? Remember Lot's wife. Remember her place. Remember her problem. Remember her privileges. But remember her perishing. Verse 26. And she became a pillar of salt. Remember, 
She perished so simply. She perished so swiftly. She perished so suddenly. And this is so serious tonight that Jesus cried, Remember, Lot's wife, let this woman tonight, Jesus say, Jesus says, let this woman tonight be a warning to you all. And she perished. And if there's one song I'm sure must have haunted Lot, well, by that song, will the circle be unbroken? But Lot and his wife are not only separated for time, but for eternity. And we read here, in verse 24, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Let me speak to you as I bring this message to a close of a coming day of judgment upon the world. Let me quote this to you. Now, this is going to happen. This is yet to happen. The Bible tells us in Revelation 6, verse 15, And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bond man, and every free man, will hide themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and shall say to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, for the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? The kings of the earth, their royal robes and their glorious thrones and their glorious crowns will not count when God comes in judgment. And their great men, these men sitting in great places, I'm telling you the fire of God's divine judgment and wrath has yet to fall. And dear, bless those tonight unrepentant sinners. who are passing all these things. I've got news for you. You're going to get your comeuppance. I have God's word for it. But thank God there's a place of escape tonight. And that place of escape is to the one that was crucified, to the one whose blood was shed, to the one who rose again from the dead. And all I want to say to you tonight is this. Escape for thy life. Here's a woman tonight. No wonder the Lord Jesus tells us, remember Lot's wife. Remember her place. Remember her problem. Remember her privileges. Remember her perishing. It was so simple. So swift. So sudden. So serious. Almost saved. So close. Imagine going to hell and your hand being in the hand of an angel from heaven. So close. But yet so far. What about you tonight? Almost persuaded now to believe. Almost persuaded Christ to receive. Seems now some soul to say, Go Spirit, go thy way. Some more convenient day on thee I call. 
Almost persuaded harvest is past. Almost persuaded doom comes at last. Almost persuaded, almost cannot avail, almost is but to fail. Sad, sad that bitter wail, almost, but lost. Remember Lot's way. Let's burn a wee word of prayer, please. O oh God, our loving and eternal Heavenly Father, this evening you have reminded all of us tonight how you hate sin. But yet, Lord, in this very passage, not only have you showed us how much you hate sin, but how much, Lord, you have magnified your mercy towards those tonight who are perishing. I pray tonight that there will not be a lot's wife amongst us. I pray for those who are almost right now will move to the altogether persuaded. And Lord, give deciding grace. I pray that God, the Holy Ghost, God, the Holy Spirit to come down and bring that conviction of sin that only thou canst bring. Bring to repentance the poor sinner's soul and bring them to Christ tonight. For as always we pray, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and for his glory's sake alone, amen and amen. Thank you very much indeed everyone for coming tonight. We are delighted to have you with us. Remember we're back here next week at 4 p.m., with our brother David Boyd. The week after that is Easter Sunday. We're back again. And I'll have my daughter along with me that night to share a word of testimony and uh, how a prodigal came home. So please do remember that. And we do trust that if anyone here today has heard God's voice and wants to do something about it, come and see us. We'll be only too glad to help you. God bless everyone. Thank you.